This is Andy Tube, and this video is going to be about the needle bar driving arm. And this arm was uh, mentioned in the video about the needle bar vibrating bracket. So if you're wondering how the machine gets to this point, that's the video that did it. Needle uh, bar vibrating bracket. I'll put a link to it. Uh, below the video and at the end of the video and I promise you this video is not going to be as long as the tension video if you struggle through that uh, lengthy video this is going to be a lot shorter but I started down here at this end to show you uh, this end of the needle bar driving arm that connects to the vibrating bracket and I'm going to show you how to uh, remove that arm and a little bit about what it does and then how to put it back in properly. So I'm going to reposition the machine and the camera here because we need a, a top-down view up here to do this work. Okay, so here is the, here is the needle bar driving arm coming through a slot in the nose and I was just showing you the end of it now this is the other end and this is so easy to remove the hard part is getting uh, getting it off of the needle bar vibrating bracket but to remove it now um, it's usually easier if you take the machine out of straight stitch and put it at about zigzag width 2. Okay. And then we're just going to pull it away from the pattern selector. And we're going to lift this end up. And then we can pull it out at about a 45 degree angle from the slot there on the left and we can get the whole thing out. So we can get a good look at it now that it's out of the machine. The end where the pin goes through into the vibrating bracket to hold it and then um, it actually sits like this and uh, This is called the ball pivot, and it fits into a socket down on the bottom here of what is called the pattern selector, and I'll show you a picture of that. And this this part here, I'm not sure what Singer called it. I've always just called it the paddle. And I want you to see on what, I, what I'll call the right side of the paddle that there's, um, see if I turn this off if you can, yeah. You see these, um, marks up here these oil stains and little scrapes mm -hmm. and on the back side there's one down lower okay and the one on the back side is from this tension arm which has the spring that goes up to the vibrating bracket if you saw that video, you remember I unhooked the other end and I showed you this end where it hooks to the tension arm here in case it fell off. It's called the tension arm because when it's all installed, it puts tension on the back of that paddle on this on this back side here. Okay. 
And then these two marks on the front are from uh, the, the uh, follower here that follows the cam pattern. And there's one uh, little arm down here that's making these marks. Whoops, that's making these marks. See, here's where the, here's where the cam follower is. And the other little arm at the bottom is making these marks. Uh, and, and, I, and I'll show you why. When when you put the machine into um, straight stitch, it moves the pattern selector around, which drags that um, ball pivot and pushes the arm to the back, and it pushes out this lever and locks it against here. And that is so it keeps the driving arm away from the uh, cam follower. Even when the machine is in straight stitch, when it's running, the, the camshaft and everything turns. And the pattern or the fashion cam rotates. Okay, can, can you see this rotating at all? And the, and the little cam follower is going to uh, follow that. So that's what, that, that's what this little arm down here does, is kind of push it and hold it against this tension arm. And then when you start to go into zigzag, not only does the pattern selector move the driving arm into play, but then this uh, can be released. It's on, it's on like a spring, but it won't be locked anymore. And it can flex with the pattern cam because now this cam is going to be moving the follower against the paddle which is going to be pushing the arm to drive the needle bar okay so when it's in straight stitch this kind of pushes it away the paddle away and and keeps it away from all this stuff so if you put your machine in straight stitch but you don't have a, a very clean straight stitch thread pattern, it might be that this is improperly adjusted or it needs cleaning. And when I said to put it in stitch with two, it's because it lines up the socket down here with this um, ball so you have it's easier to get it in and out okay because if you're if you're in straight that socket's way back here if you're in uh, too far in zigzag it's hidden under these um, follower mechanisms over here so to put it in and out it's easier to have it about position two or two and a half okay so I'm going to clean this and I'm going to come back and show you. It's real easy to put in. There's just a, a, a special way you got to fit the pattern in uh, the paddle in here so that it works properly. And then I'll show it working. Okay. I have this uh, all degreased and cleaned now and everything. It's surprising how much uh, <laughs> comes off of these parts when you clean them. But uh, they clean up nice. This, this cleans up very nice. It's kind of a mirror finish on the uh, paddle, what I call the paddle. There's a better look at that uh, chromed mm, ball pivot. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready to put it back in now. 
And uh, first, I'm going to I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of parts here, and then I'm going to show you a a, a close-up picture of them. I think I think I can get a good picture of it. But uh, this was that tension arm, and then this is what I call the locking or spacing arm, and the uh, pattern or cam follower here that, that follows the pattern. So when you put this in, what you have to do is position the paddle. So this tension arm has to be back behind the paddle. Do you remember the, the wear marks and dirty marks I showed you on the back side of the paddle uh, that, were, that were back here on the back side? right and then of course these two arms especially this one the locking arm or positioning arm they have to be around on the front of the paddle because that's where it works okay so to to let me show you that picture Okay, then, then to help line up um, the socket down there with the ball pivot, uh, again, I'm going to put this on about two, uh, anywhere between two and three will give you a pretty good shot at that socket. And I've got to drop this end down and into that slot because I, I can't get it through there once I get this the socket in place okay now I see I knocked my little spring off which is which is not important right now I'm just gonna pull it out but I want to get the tension arm spun around to the back and I'm going to drop that end in there and push it right into that socket. Okay? And then you can see I was careful to get that positioning or lock arm in the front. And of course, since I had the spring off, especially this tension arm, I was easily put way, way far away. I can spin it back now because I've got to sneak it in this space it has to go in the space behind the paddle but in front of the frame right there okay and then uh, you, you know you would put your you, you would put your spring back on to keep uh, tension against the back of this so when you put it in straight it pushes this away right and the thing would sit up more level but you see that that keeps a space between the following cam follower arm and the paddle so it doesn't interfere even though your hmm, cam is turning around while you're sewing straight stitch it can't touch the paddle Okay, see that? Nope, can't do it. So then what happens is when you start putting zigzag into play, it starts moving the arm into position so it can reach the following arm. And now as that cam pushes the follower, see the cam pushes the follower, the follower pushes the paddle, and that moves that arm back and forth. So let's see if I can make it all happen here. And it's moving the arm left. The spring's going to pull it back. Move the arm left. The spring's going to pull it back. So it's moving this arm back and forth to make the needle bar vibrate bracket move and move the needle bar for your zigzag. And depending on how you move the uh, pattern selector by 
doing this uh, lever that um, positions the paddle in the proper place for that zigzag width like two, two and a half, three, three and a half or four. And that determines how far because all this stuff just keeps moving. It just keeps going along. You know, it just keeps turning and the follower follows and pushes. So it's the needle bar driving arm moved by the by the pattern selector that positions the arm to be in the proper place so it can move that paddle and move the arm. Oop. Hey. So, I thought I could rest it up in there for a moment. There you go. That's the needle bar driving arm on the Singer 403. So if you got a 401 and you're looking at this you're seeing a whole different uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Let me pull this back out for a minute. Maybe you notice this big old hump here. That's to go over the pattern selector shaft. You know those big knobs on the front of the 401 and the 500. There's a shaft that goes through here with all kinds of followers and lifters and stuff. And this makes room for it. And to get this out, you have to pull that shaft and all those followers out. I'm so sorry. Another reason I like the 403. I can sew 20 plus different patterns just by um, changing this. Ooh. Some fuzz up there. I haven't cleaned yet. Anyway, that's the needle bar driving arm. Put that end in. Put it in about two or three and push that ball pivot into the socket. Get the paddle behind these. Get the tension arm between the paddle and the frame. Mm -hmm. It's easier to do actually than, than I'm making it look. There we go. Got to have that tension arm there between the paddle and the frame. See that? Okay, just a reminder because when I get emails from people who say, I, I did this, it doesn't work. What did you do to me? I say, send me a picture. This arm is in the front. They didn't get it in the back. Okay. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. See, that was shorter than the tension video. I told you. <laughs> I hope you'll come back and watch some more of my videos, no matter how long or short that they are. Thanks for tuning in today, and take care.